the Lord. This is a good day. And truly we can say this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Giving honor to our Lord Jesus Christ for a great day. I don't know about you, but I feel mighty fine today. Amen. Feel good. Giving honor to Pastor, my lovely wife, and all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Just thanking us for being back together again and bringing us Amen. together again. And just uh, on yesterday, me and her, I went by my cousin's house yesterday and he was showing how to use a power washer. And, uh, and he said, well, what are you going to do today? I said, well, you know, today is a beautiful day. I said, I, I got a date with one of the most beautiful women in the world. Oh, wow. I said, I got a date with my wife. We going, we going out today. We just going to go out and enjoy ourselves. You know, you work all the time and you know, we are in and we are dealing with COVID and you know, I said, hey, we just we going out and we gonna enjoy ourselves. We walked and we walked and we talked and we just had a good time. Amen. And we praise God for that. Amen. All the compliments that people was giving her on her new hairdo and, <laughs> and I said, I'm the luckiest man in the world today. <laughs> we praise God though. But uh, today I want to call your attention to the writings of in Paul in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 10th chapter and uh, verses are, I'll start reading in, in verse 13. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, starting and reading in verse 13. Amen. But we will not boast of things without our measure. But according to the measures are the rules which God has distributed to us. A measure of reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measures as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ not bolstering of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule of abundantly, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in anything man's line of things made ready to our hands. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commandeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commandeth. Amen. Stop reading there and just going to speak with you a brief while today on glorying in the Lord. Glorying in the Lord. When I think of bolstering, Webster's definition of it is excessive proud and self-satisfaction, taken about um, by one's achievements, their possessions, or uh, their ability to accomplish something. Glorying in the Lord. Father, we just come now in the name of Jesus to Lord, speak your word, hide me behind the cross, touch my lips of clay. Lord, that we do anything for no outside show, form, nor fashion. But out of all being said and done, that you get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Bolstering. I know we all have somewhere and sometime in our lives have had someone, or even not ourselves, to boast about something that they have been able to accomplish in life but the Bible warns us about boastering about your own ability but also giving God his due credit first of all we find that in this writing of the Apostle Paul that a lot of false apostles and others had creeped in 
and they was challenging Paul's ability as a role as a true apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul attacked, they was one after another, and the argument against him in this chapter was, they attacked him by implying that he was a hypocrite, mm -hmm. that he was of a coward, or even, maybe even both. The distraction was, Paul was brave when he was away writing this letter to the Corinthians. Lacking confidence when he was face to face with them. But even more abundantly, Paul quoted. By saying these words in 2 Corinthians 10.10. 10, his letter was weightly and strong. But in his boldest present, he says, I'm weak. And his speech is no of count. 2 Corinthians 10.10. 10. The guess of their accusation seemed to be that a true apostle should be more impressive. Have you been there? Have someone said a measure you up to someone else? They wanted Paul to be more impressive in his appearance. So the false prophets had already made the hearts of the Corinthians and their church. You know, it's a bad thing to start comparing apples to oranges. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because all the abilities that God gives us, we give Him the glory by giving it back to Him. <coughs> Oftentimes, we earn degrees. And different things we accomplish in life. There's nothing wrong with giving yourself credit. But also remember who is the wind beneath your wings. Amen. They had a saying that says, quick up the ladder, fast back down. So Paul, in his writing, he does not argue with the characterization of the letter. But he had a strong account that he did not compare himself to the false prophets that had creeped in to the church over at Corinth. Well, the robberies of the Corinthians' loyalty may seem themselves in a competition with Paul, but he understood that it was to be a war. For he says, our war is not coming, but by everything pulling down strongholds. Paul and his fellow warriors will take the Corinthians, their very thoughts, into captive. You know, the Bible says we can call those things into captivity. Allow them once again to believe what is true and return by obeying Christ. Their spiritual weapons and God's given authority as Christ had represented, they are his representative. They stand ready to punish every disobedient against Christ. This includes both the deceptive false teachers and the brethren living in sinful rebellion. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6. And after these strong warlike words, Paul began to reason with the Corinthians. Are they confident that they belong to Christ? You know, oftentimes when we are confronted with false teachings and false doctrine, it makes you think about, I'm really following Christ? And this is what have creeped into the Corinthians church. And you know, sad to say today that it's already out today in our time. We love to run after impressive apostles. They speak very elegant. And, we, we, and they're so divine. And we, 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 we quick to want to run into those ministers. Listen, if God has blessed you and he got a blessing for you, he can give you your blessing right here in Bible. Amen. 
Amen. I hear testimony after testimony here about how God has blessed Amen. His people. Amen. So we don't no longer have to follow false prophets. And Paul had authority as Christ's true apostle. That he was real hearted. And his intentions was to preach the gospel and to destroy the false teaching of the false apostles. Yes. Glorying in the Lord. Boasting is ununiversal and is, it is a denounced that as we boast, we should give God the praise. Amen. And yet it is a fault not uncommon in our society. It imposed upon the unthinking and the unweary, but it is awakening the uh, suspicion and the distrust of those who have no longer experience of life. But in the region of spiritual service, boastfulness is a serious offense. How did I sing today? Did I knock them out? <laughs> did I preach and I, they all did I did, did I kill it today? <laughs> you know that is a serious offense. Right, that's right. But God give each person and their ability to accomplish what He have set out to accomplish right. through Amen. them. But in our society, we want to kill them. We want to knock them out. Right. But in those regions, spiritual serviceness. But is it against God when we don't give Him His glory? Amen. For He says He have created everything for His glory. And the apostle protested against it. First of all, we find men are tempted to glorify in themselves. What are you saying? Well, men have their uh, way. They are. Uh, it's a dangerous thing. Are overestimating your ability and thus taking credit to yourself when no credit is due to you. Wow. We always want to take credit for something that we have nothing to do with. But only take credit for what you have your hands on. Amen. Some glorify in their endowments they love to brag about what they have accomplished in this life. Mm -hmm. Their strength of their body, of their mental ability. Some an accidental of birth or fortunes. They just looked up on it and claimed that they did it on their own. <laughs> and some in their positions in society. You know, I talked about pulling yourself up by the bootstrap. They get up to a certain level and they look back at you and say, you better work your way up and somebody helped him up. Right. You have to be careful. Quick up, fast down. For this temptation to boast is against spiritual principles. The labels are not free. Some religions teach, preach, and some writers and some are officials. They proud themselves upon their gifts. Well, when God gives you a gift, it is to glorify Him that He has instilled the gift into you. Amen. Amen. I have a gift mechanically inclined. There are things that I can tear apart and put back together. But when I come down to realize that this ability that he has given me in this gift is it, the, the credit goes to God. Amen. Yes, he has given me this talent. Some folks have a talent to sing as a jaybird. <laughs> they can play the piano with no hiccups. Amen. But God gives them that gift. Amen. And listen, when God gives someone else a gift, don't get jealous. Amen. Support them. Encourage them along the way. Esteem them. 
most of their condition con, 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 condi, conditions and their acceptance. If a person whom the apostle refers to well first, they will certainly not be the last of this order of men. The only disassemble of glorifying is the glory in the Lord. Christians may glorify in their divine grace to which their own, their own spiritual position. This they may do when they are asked. What have we that we did not receive? What do we have that we didn't receive? Whom have made us to be different? That's the problem with America today. It's so separate and divided. They want to say that the red states are the ones that caused the hurricane to do the destruction. How crazy is that thinking? <laughs> if you get into the word of God, it tells you Amen. that this God we serve rides upon the winds. Amen. Yes, we have destroyed our glo global warming by all the things that we have polluted what God has given us. Amen. And so we are to glory and give him to glory. Christian ministers may glory in the opportunity of service in their divine to best owe their abilities for this fulfillment. The apostle felt that he had been the head of the church and had put honor and given honor where honor is due. All true labors of Christ may glory in their success but they give the glory to the divine Father. Yes, Paul came up against them. But the Corinthians' mind had been poisoned. Their ears had been tickled. They wanted this impressive apostle to come in and teach their uh, words to their tickling ears they wanted to hear. But Paul came up against them. You know, oftentimes when you're speaking the truth of the Word of God, we don't want to hear it. We want somebody to give us some good time, good old feeling. A lot of us want to hoop, shout. But I'm here to tell you today, the only thing that's going to get you through the body of Christ is a closer walk with God and his word. Amen. They talked about what Job, all the things that he had. Why did God allow Satan to come up against him? And you look at yourself and find out why God allowing all these things to come up against me. I'm praying. I'm going to church. I'm studying his word. And even though these things are coming up against me, it is to see if you're going to stand strong Amen. Trust Him. Amen. And when He brings you through, that you can give Him the glory. Amen. And don't take any credit for yourself. Amen. And that's where the church have failed, I believe. Amen. Oftentimes we want to take credit for things where credit Amen. is not due to us. Amen. As I close today, Amen. the apostle wanted us to know Deny yourself and give the credit to God. Amen. I am reminded each and every time about the cross. A writing that says the cross that I carry in my pocket. It reminds me of what Jesus did some 2,000 years ago. He came down through 40 and two generations to save a people that was down their way to hell to redeem us back to our Heavenly Father. We no longer have to sacrifice bull and goats. 
We no longer have to go in the temple as a priest and sacrifice in the temple. Oh, but my God, we have a great priest today. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. All you got to do is call him up, the songwriter says. Early in the morning, you can call him up. Amen. In the midnight hour, you can call him up. When you're going through your lonely time, you can call him up. He says he's there waiting to hear our cry. He goes in. The holy are holy. Where the veil once divided us. Hallelujah. Yes. When he died out on Calvary, earth shook. And the veil that had separated us so long from God was ripped. And Jesus got up out of the grave with all power in his hands. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We can go directly to our Christ today. Because he want to hear us crying out to him today. Just hold it a minute, brother. Just hold it a minute. He want to hear our cry today. Yes. He want to know, are you going to call out to him? Amen. He want to know that when he bring you through, that you're going to give him the glory. Amen. You're not going to give it to some well-spoken preacher. Just because he speak eloquent. Just because he wear a $3,000 suit. I don't have anything against those who are doing well. But I look back over my life. And I see how good God has been to me. I have to give him the glory on this morning. Because I'm so grateful. When I think about the goodness of my God, I got clothes on my back. I got shoes on my feet. I have not been homeless. I could have been, but I haven't been. God has brought me from a mighty, mighty long ways. And I'm not going to give glory to no man on this morning, nor tomorrow, nor the next day. But I'm going to give all the glory to God. Amen. Jesus Christ, my Lord, you brought me, Lord, over many mountains. You have carried me through many valleys. You have brought me around many curves. And I know that you are able today. You are able to make my crooked road straight today. All you got to do is hang on in there just for a little while longer. Because you said that if you go away, my God, you said you're coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And one day when the trumpet shall sound, we who remain alive shall be caught up to meet you in the air and shall live with you in glory for eternity. And that's why I'm here to glorify Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glorify Jesus. Amen. The name that is sweeter than honeycomb. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Give him the glory. We've been giving man too much glory. That's right. God says, I want my right to do. Amen. That you glorify him. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When I look back and think of just where, how far I come. Amen. My, 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 my. I think about those men who have gone on before us, who have paved the way. Yes. That we glorify the day our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm through. I know the hour is getting late. I had a little bit more, but I'm going to yeah, turn it loose. Yeah, yeah. We got communion. Hallelujah.